Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, everybody? Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. Uh, Sunday morning, day off from work, and I just purchased, it came in Friday afternoon, the High Gain AV680, which I purchased from MFJ High Gain. And um, so the story is, I, I talked with Richard, and I said, Richard, I'm used to, well, I've said in previous videos, I'm used to using homemade off-center fed dipoles and homemade wire dipoles, and I've always had good luck with it, but uh, I'm not putting the wires back up and I said, you know, Richard, I need something that's a good vertical that does a lot of the bands and is really not that tall, but, uh, you know, good features. What do you recommend? He said, this is what Martin F. Jew, the founder of uh, MFJ, actually uses at the building. He uses the AV680 and he says, by far, this is the best high gain antenna they make. Nine bands, 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6. Full legal limit, 1500 watts, and no mystery traps or resonators. They, they've designed this antenna to be resonant on certain bands uh, or all those bands with uh, certain pieces that uh, self resonating, you know, stubs or, uh, you know, the way they built this. There, there are no traps or mystery um, matching coils or anything like that. So, they put a lot of work into this antenna to make it resonant on all those bands. And um, the ground, the, the counterpoise is also included with this. It uses the counterpoise elements on the bottom. So it's a whole self-contained unit. You don't have to sink a ton of wires in the ground for each band, which makes it ideal for me because I don't feel like doing that. Um, but the AV680 from MFJ, first antenna like this I've ever purchased, first one I'm ever gonna put up like this. So I'll kind of get clips on the video and how I'm putting it together. We'll put it on the SWR analyzer, see what it does on different bands, and make some contacts on it. So the link is in the description, the AV680. And this is one up from the AV640, which this one adds the addition of 80 meters. So uh, let's get to it. It does come with the instruction book with the parts list. And read this, please, because this is the whole reason I'm putting this antenna up, because my little tower I had before fell into the 13,000 volt power lines and got some stuff so uh, that's why I'm not putting that back up with the wires I figured I'd try to vertical but very careful be very careful make sure this doesn't come in contact with any power lines contrary to what I normally do when I put stuff together it's probably a good idea to take your parts out label or they're labeled so take the parts out so you see what you have because in the manual it shows you uh, you know figure a figure B and you want to have all your parts um, and you know ready to go before you start this Okay, so, so I went through section one it took me about 35 minutes to put this section together This is the height of the antenna. This is the center radiator I haven't put any of the other stuff on yet, but essentially this is your length the entire 27 feet Now if you look at this part right here, this is the coil assembly now this is what makes the antenna resonate on uh, 20 30 40 and 80 and you can see there's individual coils on here so the coils are in parallel and these are what add electrically add distance or length I'm sorry to the antenna which make it resonate on 20 or 40 or 80. Now the other bands are going to come with the, the different parts and the stuff we're going to put on next. But so far, that's uh, step one. One little fun fact here. If you look, there's four joints that are telescopic where one meets into the other. There's one here. There's one there. There's one there. And there's one up top here. Uh, for long-term use, um, they do recommend putting a conductive uh, paste in here, a conductive paste that would keep it from oxidizing from the RF and uh, weather. So you don't want to use that on any insulators, but you can use that on the different parts that are that slide into each other, the telescopic parts, 
to keep that when you need to take it apart in the future that it's not corroded and uh, and oxidized. This one part's a little tricky. You have to put these brackets together for the radiator uh, radiators that go up, and you got to make sure that you offset these correctly. These are supposed to be offset. Shows you in the manual on Figure C, and uh, they have to be a certain length. You have to measure from the joint down here. So that was a little tricky to do that part. All right, so I got all the stub insulators on. This was a little tedious because, again, they all have to be measured one from another to make sure they're at the right distance from each other. Then you'll see you should have all of them in a row like that. And they have to be in the right way so that the radiating stubs will fit in the holes. All right, so I'm starting to put the tuning stubs or the radiating stubs on here. So this is where it's starting to look more like the AV680. So looking at these, when you read the manual, there's a bunch of these different stubs and this is for individual bands. For instance, this one I put on here is gonna be for six meters and tuning six meters will be pulling out or lowering this here. It recommends uh, 55 and a half inches, but I could tune specifically for the portion of the band. That's six meters and then here's the 10 meters. So again, looking down here, um, 10 meters will go together. And then on the end of this one here is where I'm going to match it. it says 102 inches, 102 and a half inches, but I'll, I'll go up and down and get this really precise where I want it. And then there'll be a 17 meter uh, tuning stub and such. And, and so we're moving on to that part now. So right now I'm invested about a uh, total of three hours into this since I started this video. So let's keep going. All right, now we're getting to the counterpoise and capacity hat. Here's the matching box I put on. Um, it did tell you in the manual to keep these bolts loose in the beginning for a good reason. And uh, you'll notice the wire goes from the side of the matching box there to the uh, counterpoise bracket there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna skip a few parts and get these things on. Um, but you see these radials here, I want you to see something. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Okay, there are rubber caps on here that come in the bag, but uh, let me tell you right now, do not, do not put those radials on without eye protection. Please take it from somebody who has a uh, issue with an eye from a previous experience. Do not get in the way of these things and have them poke your eye. It's a very, very uh, dangerous thing. That's not just this antenna, that's any antenna. You know, there's the capacity hat and the spokes I have to put up top, but I'm gonna make sure I set this antenna up. I'm probably gonna put the top ones on first, and I'm gonna set the antenna up where these aren't wobbling all over the place on the pole, and then I'll put the uh, counterpoise on if I can do that. I might jump the manual a little bit. So let's get that done. Definitely one of the uh, parts I took my time on. This took me about 45 minutes to put all these on, loosen them enough to where I can slide the spokes in, but they didn't fall out as I got all of them in and then tighten them down. And uh, again, with the black caps, be very careful. I did it from one side here, the shortest elements and worked that way. All right, so uh, I got this thing put together and I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. I put the, the uh, counterpoise radials on right here when it was on the pole, just because I was afraid of them. Now, I know that the pole I have concreted in is not high enough, recommended to be eight feet above ground. Um, I think it'll work with a minimum of five, but let's, let's take a look at this thing real quick. All right, there you go. It wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna to be to put up, so I had the wife help me, and of course she was yelling at me. What do you want me to do? What am I doing? So anyways, uh, without even tuning or pruning this thing yet, I'm gonna check out on the analyzer. I have my MFJ down there. I'm gonna check out, without having even tuned what this thing is yet, and I guess I'm gonna to have to get this thing down and clip a couple spokes possibly. Uh, for a couple bands to uh, make sure that they're as resonant as they can get. But um, other than that, 
uh, we'll see what this thing does with the counterpoise on the ground and I can imagine it would only be better if it was higher uh, I'll have to work on that of course I'm gonna finish this video before I figure that out because I'm gonna have to have a few people up here and possibly uh, get this thing up on the on an eight-foot pole so let's see what the analyzer says all right so again ground mounted not even up high enough um, we're gonna start at 80 meters here or 75 meters uh, 3843 is just about 1.1 right there uh, we're gonna move up to let's see we'll go up to 7 megahertz 40 meters 40 meters right wow look at that that thing is flat right at 7.157 yep 7.157 1.0 to 1 all right, we'll move up to 30 meters. Uh, 30 meters, 1.0 to 1. Looking up here, flat. We'll move up to, let's see. We'll go up here to uh, 20 meters. Now, it looks like 20 meters. I'm going to have to change at the top between the spokes and that coil. 20 meters is real high. Um, I'll move up to... 17 meters not bad 1.3 oh, right in the middle there one 1.5 so there's room for adjustment it's totally flat it's it's really good right at right above the band so we could work on that then I move to uh, 15 meters 15 meters is 1.4 roughly at the top end of the band 1.4 across the whole band uh, 10 meters my favorite band Here's 10 28.4 look at that 1.2 to 1 right at 28.5 right in the heart of the 10 meter sideband portion And then we'll go to 6 meters because I haven't had 6 meter capability in a long time uh, Looks like right at 52. Oh, here we'll go down to 50.100 would be Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Roger, I heard you in there. Just wanted to make a couple tests on this antenna. Thank you very much. Down from Florida, 73, KJ4 YZI. 73, have a good afternoon. See ya. Have a good night. Well, it's working really good over here at the Texas too, man. Yeah, it's working. Oh, very good. Good evening, uh, KJ4 YZI. I'm uh, just testing. You're the first contact on the new high gain AV680 I just put up. That was a process building that, but uh, it seems like so far it's been worth it. Go ahead. Yeah, very good. Uh, well, I'm only using 100 watts here, and uh, it's <laughs> I didn't have the room to get it up off the ground any more than the uh, recommended uh, eight feet. I'm only up about three feet, so the radials are laying on the ground. But I figured I'd give it a shot and worry about putting it up somehow uh, higher later. 
So I'm gonna have to get up there or get this down and it uh, looks like 20 meters right there is uh, too long 13.160 it's it's too long so I need to shorten that up just a tad per the manual it shows you exactly how to tune that so uh, that'll be uh, after this video of course so. all right so let me finish this video up tonight here before it gets too dark um, let's see overview of the antenna well it did take me uh, if I went from uh, the start to finish probably about uh, well I took a couple days so probably six or seven hours to, to act accurately you know look at it because I I didn't have any issues where I had to take stuff apart there's a few things where it says do this now and you'll know why later and I followed the directions and therefore I didn't have to un uh, disassemble anything because I rushed through it um, the one thing I will say is I have to get it down to tune 20 now 20 meters is absolutely uh, not usable at this time and when you look in the manual up on the very top not the very top but the uh, third third section up there of spokes um, you have to adjust that clip it for 20 and it's not that hard but I have to get this thing down also I'm gonna get this thing up higher uh, but I have to get some more concrete longer pole and a few people to get me uh, situated but overall um, I, I had all the pieces in the pack I have a few extra screws I don't know if that's my fault or not because I seem to have used every single piece without uh, having to rig anything so maybe there's just a couple extra bolts there there's a couple things in the manual that you want to pay attention to that maybe uh, it might be in the manual that it's using eight uh, screws that are labeled s3 instead of uh, s4 and you may have too many s3 screws and not enough s4 so just you can figure it out um, other than that uh, I'll probably tune that coil up there if I had a zoom I'll probably tune this coil for the uh, 80 instead of 75 because it's flat on 75 but I think I'd rather have it on 80 meters um, other than that uh, really didn't have any issues other than that putting it together it was it was a fun project I have to say it's I feel like an artist after you put something like this together because there's so many different pieces and parts um, it makes it fun uh, but you know what uh, other than that, I made a, I made a contact or two, and um, besides my power line noise, which I think is coming from up there, uh, is going to be rectified soon because I'm sick of hearing it. Uh, this thing should be a superstar. Hey, it's a superstar here, uh, three feet off the ground, not even. And uh, in future videos, I'll be using this. This is permanent setup once I get it tuned and situated. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope this video uh, was fun to watch. And you know what? There's something else coming. Here's a secret. Look what I got next. The MFJ cobweb antenna. That's the next video coming up here soon. So uh, stay subscribed. A lot of stuff out there on my channel. Coming up to 100, 100 videos and uh, uh, it's doing well. So 7-3, thanks for watching. From KJ4YZI.